All right, start recording. So before that, I switch off my camera first. All right. Then I will share with you my slide. Okay, I hope all of you can see my slide. Is it can? Yes, yes Doctor. All right. Yes, so, for, okay, good. Okay, for today, we're going to continue about the major organic molecules uh, of living cells, which is uh, for today's topic, we will co uh, focusing on proteins. All right. In previous week, we already learned about the carbohydrates and also lipids. Yeah. Right? Uh, the, the the carbo and also carb uh, and also fat. Okay, uh, lipids also we call it as a fat. Okay, for today, we are focusing on proteins. Okay, so let me start uh, with uh, the introduction first. Okay, so protein, as you know, uh, protein is actually the most structurally and functionally diverse group of biomolecules. Okay, so uh, in a protein molecule, they have a many peptide change, which is they are joining together to form a polypeptide change. So when we're talking about protein molecule, it's actually the combination, the joining of the amino acid. All right. So when amino acids are joining together, they are bound together. So they will form a molecule protein. All right. So protein, um, protein, they perform many functions in living organisms, which is uh, involved in almost everything in our life which is it's involved in the metabolism process to support, all right, and also for transport in and out of our cells in the body, and also they are functioning uh, in the regulations process and also in the motions of muscles, okay? So in the, um, just now I'm talking about the amino acid, right? So the, the amino acid actually, they will form uh, a structure Okay, when they are bond, bonding together, later on we will study about the level of um, the level of process uh, in order for the amino acid to form the structural protein. All right, so when they are forming the structural pro uh, protein, each structure they will have different function. All right, so uh, the word protein, okay, it's derived from the Greek, the Greek which is protos. Okay, which is meaning first or foremost. Uh, that is why just now I'm talking about the protein is actually the most structurally and functionally diverse group of biomolecules in our life. Okay, so um, protein may be classified according to their physiologic functions. Okay, and the amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Okay, just now I'm talking about this one. When the amino acids are forming to uh, forming a joining together, so a block of amino acids we call it as a protein. Okay, so um, actually, uh, it also can be said that a protein is actually made out of a amino acid. All right. So there are twenty different amino acids. Okay, that create the different combination for specific function in the body. All right. So when we have twenty amino acids, for example, um, we have tyrosine. Okay, tyrosine, pro, uh, tyrosine, which is they are producing the hormones. Okay, uh, hormones of uh, tyrosine and also adrenaline. We also have um, the skin pigment, melanin. All right. So they have different functions uh, due to different structure of combination of amino acid right so um, protein is actually an energy which is yielding nutrient composed of carbon hydrogens oxygen and also nitrogens okay and these proteins are differ from carbohydrates and also fats because of the presence of the nitrogens you must remember that the carbohydrates and also the fat they are uh, uh, they are actually are building by the elements of carbon hydrogens and oxygen but what is different between uh, carbohydrate and also fat is because of the structure of the combination of this element but when we're talking about protein there are additional uh, elements that we call it as a, the presence of the nitrogen all right so the body uh, has at least 30,000 types of protein which with a different job okay 
each protein, each structural protein, they have a different functions. Okay. So both when building blocks, okay, these building blocks is actually all the protein molecules, which is made up of the amino acid. All right. So uh, we go to the types of amino acid. They have two types of amino acid, which is the first one is dispensable amino acid. And the, sec the second one is we call it as the in in indispensable amino acid, or we call it as a essential amino acid. Okay, so this is also we can call it as a non-essential amino acid. So this non-essential amino acid is actually where our body can produce this uh, amino acid by our own body. Right, so uh, our body can synthesize uh, about 11 of the amino acids from the other amino acids. All right, but when talking about the essential amino acids, uh, the remaining of nine amino acids must come from our diet. We must gain it. Okay, it cannot be produced by our, our body. We must gain it by, by, by the food intake. All right, and you need all the amino acids to make the proteins your body needs for a good health. Okay, so just now we're talking about the essential and non-essential amino acid, right? So this is the nine uh, essentials of amino acids. Total, we have 20 amino acids that we need in our body. Okay, so nine of it is the essential amino acids which are comprised of the histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, thioronine, type uh, tryptophan and so valine. and they are the 11 of amino acids we call it as the non-essential because we can produce the amino acid from other amino acids but this essential amino acid we must gain it from the diet intake all right so this is the example uh, this is the um different uh, differentiation between the essentials and non-essentials of amino acid okay then we move to the uh, basic unit of protein. Okay, just now I'm talking about the protein. They have the carbon. They also are composed of hydrogen. Okay, they also compose of the other one is oxygen. But additional to the uh, carbohydrate and also uh, lipids, the fat is actually the presence of the nitrogen. So this is the basic unit of protein, which is we have the carbon here. We call it as the alpha carbon. We also have the hydrogen here, all right? We also have the amino acid here and also carboxyl, uh, carboxylic acid group, okay? Or we call it as a carboxyl group. So this is actually the main unit of amino acid, okay? Which is they have the carbon which attach, we join, we bond to the hydrogens, okay? We have the amino acid group and also we have the carboxyl acid group but what makes it different between amino acid to another amino acid is because of the different sites of change which is the other change of uh, carb uh, carbon alpha carbon is actually the r group or we call it as a functional group so the different sites change which is r is the one who determine the properties of 20 amino acid that we need all right So, the structure, just now I'm talking about the central carbon, or we call it as a alpha carbon here, okay? So, they also have the amino group, which is one uh, nitrogen with the two hydrogens. We also have the carboxyl group, the acid group right here. And also, we also have the R group or the functional group, okay? Or we, we in the chain, in one chain, we call it as a site chain. So this R group is actually a variable group. It confers a unique chemical properties of the amino acid. For example, if you can see from here, so they have each of these, they have the uh, alpha uh, carbon, okay, alpha carbon, which join with the hydrogen, okay. Three of them, they have, even though they, they are different amino acid, but they have the carbon, central carbon or alpha carbon, which attach to the amino group, all right, which attach to the amino group and the other one is attached to the carboxyl group, 
Okay, so what makes the uh, glycine, the penylalanine, the aspartic acid is different is because of this side change. Okay, when this, uh, we call it as the uh, backbone of the protein. Okay, with, with um, if these three um, main component of um, amino acid joining with one hydrogen, it becomes the glycine. Okay, when it join to this group, Okay, the, as, the R group, it will become the aspartic acid. Okay, so this one is actually the, uh, the, the, the one who make the variability in the amino acid. Alright, so different amino acids showing their unique site change in here. Okay, so uh, just now we are categorized the amino acid into essentials, which is we have nine amino acids. And also dispensable amino acid or non-essential, we have 11 right so these are these are the 20 amino acid but categorized into hydrophobic hydrophilic acidic and uh, basic okay so uh, in our last lecture we are talking about the hydrophobic which is the element who are afraid from the fear from the water so this one the hydrophilic which is blend with the water and also we have acidic and also blue blue one is indicate the basic amino acid okay for example in here just now the glycine and also the glycine and also the serine so both of these amino acid are non-essentials amino acid okay which is uh, our body can produce uh, this type of amino acid but then in this one glycine is categorized as the hydrophobic okay and serine is actually categorized in the hydrophilic Okay, so they have a different function when they are they, they, they are needed to form the protein. Okay, the structure of the protein. Okay, so uh, the amino acid also can be categorized into non-polar and polar amino acid. Okay, when talking about non-polar, it's actually the thing, the element that with uh, that have non-charge. Okay, they don't have charge. So when talking about non-polar amino acid, it's actually the amino acid that they don't have any charge. Okay, so the non-polar and hydrophobic. So this uh, amino acid, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so this nine amino acid, they they are actually non-polar. They don't have uh, the um, charge and also the hydrophobic. Okay, they don't blend in the water. All right. So what is about the polar? So polar amino acid is actually when the amino acid, they have a charges, okay? They have the charge. So we have serine, theuronines, cysteine, tyrosine, asparagine, and so glutamine, all right? And the, the, the uh, polar amino acid also, they are categorized into electrically charged, okay? When it is, remember, uh, in the black figure, we have, we have acidic amino acid and we have basic amino acid. So, this acidic amino acid is actually the negatively charged, okay? They have the charge of ion here, okay? While the basic of the um, amino acid, is actually, they have the positive charge, okay? So, this is the important characteristic of um, ion, which is when they, they are forming the, uh, the, the, the structure of protein, they will attach together, like negative to the negative, right? Uh, so this is the, 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 the most important structure of the amino acid, okay? So these properties, I'm talking about polar, the non-polar, the uh, we're talking about negative charge and so positive type charge, okay? This property are extremely important when it comes to forming the proteins, okay? As different group, as different group, R group, as different R group will allow the, we call it as a non-covalent bond to form uh, to form between amino acid, okay, when, when, when they are forming amino acid, all right, in any polypeptide change, all right. So, for example, in here we have um, only amino acid with charge R, okay, they can form the ionic bonds with each other of um, other charge of amino acid. Okay, so this is polar. Okay, so all, all the polar amino acid, okay, they have either OH, okay, or they have uh, the, um, they have the amino acid group, all right, uh, which can therefore make the hydrogen bond with other 
suitable uh, suitable of other groups of amino acid. Okay, so this is the important properties uh, in the amino acid. Okay. okay. So structure. Okay. Uh, one amino acid, one unit of amino acid is actually we call it a, as a monomer. Okay, just now we have uh, carbon that attached with the hydrogen. So, it also bond with the uh, amino acid group, which also bond with the, uh, uh, the other carboxyl group. And also, the, the alpha carbon is bond with another R group. So, this one we call as a monomer. Okay, so in our body, it actually we need uh, about 20 different of amino acids. Okay, which is 11 made by the body. We call it as a non-essentials amino acid. And the other nine is essential amino acid, which is we must get from the food. Okay, how about the polymer? Is monomer is one change. The polymer is actually, we have the uh, several change. Okay, which is when one amino acid, they are combined, they are joining with another amino acid. Okay, so when one amino acid combined with one amino acid combined with one amino acid, we call it as a polymer or polypeptide. Okay, poly banyak. So protein can be one or more poly polypeptide change folded and bonded together. Okay, later on we study about the structure. Okay, we have four level of structure in protein. Okay, and also the polypeptide, they have the large and also complex molecule molecule com, uh, molecules and also they have complex 3D shape like here we have uh, the examples of um, complex 3D shapes of rubisco so rubisco is actually an enzyme protein okay and also we are talking about protein can be one or more polypeptide change folded and bonded together for example we have hemoglobin okay so one color is actually one polypeptide okay so in hemoglobin they have four polypeptide peptide are folded and bonded together to make the hemoglobin protein. Okay. okay. So, building the protein. Okay, just now we are talking about the bonding, okay, the, 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 the folded, the assembly of the amino acid. So, the building the protein is actually, uh, it, it, it will go to the peptide bonds. It will have the peptide one in here. If one amino acid, they are bonded together with another one amino acid. Okay. So the linking of uh, the amino acid group, okay, to the carboxyl, carboxyl group of another amino acid, okay, um, uh, which is the free of carboxyl group at one end, it ready to form another peptide bond in other end terminal to the C terminal of the um, another amino acid. Okay, so uh, N terminals, uh, so okay, so this is what we call the C N terminal, okay, which is one, one group of amino acid, they are ready to join with another group of amino acid, okay. So they, when these uh, two amino acids are combined, it will, it will go through the dehydration synthesis, which is OH plus H, they, they will become the H2O, which is water. So the water will be released. Mm, they will release the molecule of water, this H2O. So the releasing of uh, molecular water, we call it as the dehydration synthesis. And then the C uh, terminus uh, bond with the N terminus, they will uh, make the peptide bond. So this is what we call as the peptide bond. Okay. So one amino acid combined with one amino acid, they will become the polypeptide uh, change. All right. So uh, the quality of uh, protein is determined by its ability to provide uh, the nine essential amino acid. Okay, so uh, the nine essential amino acids cannot be made by the body. Okay, as a result, it must come from the food. All right, and the protein from animal sources, for example, we have eggs, dairy, meat, poultry, and also fish. Okay. And one vegetable protein, uh, for example, we have soy, are all considered as a high quality because of all of these are contained of all the essential amino acid in the necessary proportions. Okay, so uh, for the other example, we have nuts, we have seeds, uh, we have uh, 
peas okay or beans okay and uh normally we we eat the whole grain all of that one is actually uh the excellent sources of protein but only come from a complete protein when they are consumed together okay so each of its own is lacking a few of the essential amino acid that is why we have to have the complete uh intake of protein okay we, we cannot depend on one sources of protein only all right so the central idea of the protein is actually uh, the protein is a complex nutrient essential to so many important important function is our body and the proteins needs can be met by eating a variety okay just now i'm talking about we have to have a variety of food sources we cannot depend on only one sources of food okay because uh, for example uh, the needed of protein okay more half of the um uh, half of the protein are need by, uh, for the muscle okay and the other one this is for the bone this this is for the skin and the other is actually for blood for gland for nerve tissue okay so this is the importance of the protein in our body system okay for example we use for metabolism for support for transport okay motions of our muscles and so on okay so uh the protein um we consume can be altered and changed but can never return to its initials from okay when we already altered or changed the structure of the protein uh it can be uh altered but it never returned to its initial form okay this is called the denaturations okay at the end of our lecture we'll focus on the denaturations so this can be seen when you add a heat to an egg for example here okay you uh you you added a heat to an egg so it will change from a runny fluid so this is the albumin the source of the protein okay so it will change when you added the heat so it will change from a runny fluid to a solid mass okay so the the, the protein actually we can chain it okay but it will never return to its initial we will uh, never return to its initial form okay so the shapes of the protein molecules in this food have been changed Okay. So the factor that cause the denaturations, we have heat, for example, uh, in here, we have acid, we have bases, we have alcohol, and also the mechanical agitations. Okay. So the functions, okay, just now we already learned about the structure. Okay, mm -hmm. what is actually the uh, the what is actually the protein is about. So we now move move to the functions of protein. As we know. The uh, protein are um, an important to our body because they are actually their function in all part, all metabolism of our body. Okay, the first one is actually to build and maintain the tissue. All right. So, uh, the proteins actually make up made up of about eighteen to twenty percent of our body, and it is a necessary part of every cells. Okay, for examples, for muscles. For organs, skin, blood, hair, nails, and every other body parts, okay, um, and also the skeletal muscles. Then just now, uh, you if you remember, we are talking about the pie chart, okay. Half of the protein that used for the skeletal muscles, right? So the skeletal muscles account for about that more than half of body protein, okay. And the protein also function in uh, to support, okay. That's not talking about to support, which is they give the uh, which is the structural proteins, okay. For examples, are uh, the protein of keratin, okay, is important to our hair, to the nails, okay, collagens to support the ligaments, okay, tendons, and also skin. Uh, so, so this is the, the the examples before they uh, inject the protein, the collagen protein, okay to the lips okay before and after okay they support the ligament tendons and also skin and for example six okay uh silk is actually uh, by the cocoons and also spider webs so uh the, 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 the protein also can can function as a structural protein okay so the other one is uh the, the protein are make important compounds so body i uses protein to mix enzymes uh, some hormones and also okay, and also antibodies 
okay uh, antibody uh, to de to defend against infection and also disease uh, so this is uh, the importance of protein okay they can make important compound so for metabolisms process which is they are they are they are can make the enzymes okay so uh, in the biological catalyst which is the protein i help in the speed up of the chemical reactions okay for example the enzyme that produced by the protein is actually the digestive enzyme okay which help in hydrolysis okay for example we have lipase amylase lactase and also protease all right and also uh, in the biology uh, molecular biology uh, in the process of polymerase ligase and also in the industry for example in the dairy baby food okay rubber beer photography contact lens cleaner and so on okay all of these are needed the protein to make up of the of all this metabolism okay for example in here uh, you can see this is the substrates okay the substrates are uh, enter the active site okay so the enzyme will change the protein the enzyme will change the shape the shape slightly as the substrate binds okay it will change the shapes okay so this is what we call the enzyme substrate complex all right so the enzyme will, will have the products okay we change into a products okay any products uh, hormones antibodies and so on okay then the, pro the, the products will leave the active site of the enzyme okay so the function the main function of protein is it can make the important compound all right then the other one the protein also can regulate minerals and fluid balance okay the protein helps to carry the minerals for example the sodium and so the potassium from one side of cell wall to another okay so we call it as a transport it help in the transports of minerals okay so the important to transport uh, to maintain the you know the, the 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 ingredients between one cell to one cell is to keep a balance of fluids okay inside and outside of the cells um, so it also can uh, be a channel and also carrier proteins in the cell membrane all right it allow the substrates to enter and exit the cells okay uh, for example it can transport the molecules in the blood. Uh, for example, uh, the protein is hemoglobin, okay, which is transport oxygen in the blood. Okay, so as you can see from here, we are talking about uh, the, the, the protein can serve as the channel and carrier of the protein. Okay, so so they, they can become the gated, okay, which is the they allow the substrate to enter and exit of the uh, 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 from the cell. Okay. So, um, the other uh, functions of protein is for defense, okay, antibodies, okay, it can create uh, the antibodies, okay, other compounds, which is antibodies. Uh, so, antibodies is very important, which is uh, to combat the bacteria and also viruses, okay. And the other one is for regulations, hormone, for example, okay. Cellular messengers can influence the metabolism in our body. Okay, for example, insulin is actually regulated the amount of glucose in the blood and in the cells. So what, why this important of protein, right? And the human growth hormone, okay, we need this, this protein, okay, in the human growth hormone because it presented to determine the height of an individual, okay, cukup protein, cukup tinggi. All right. So the other one is as a uh, receptor proteins. Okay, it built into the membrane of nerve cells, and it also can detect the chemical signals. We, we call it as a neurotransmitter. Uh, in the third year, um, you already learned about. You will learn about the uh, neurotransmitter. Okay, Shafiq, Shafiq already learned about this one. Not in the third year. Sorry, in the second year. So it will released by other nerve cells. So we call it as a Presynaptic cells. So this is as uh, uh, this is um, synapse. So this is the postsynaptic cells. So for example, in here, uh, dopamine. Dopamine is a hormone. Okay. So so this is the uh, vesicles containing the dopamine. So it will release the dopamine hormone, right, through the synapse. So in here, where the protein uh, uh, serve as a receptor protein. So they will attach to the uh, receptor, 
Okay, so this is we call the receptor protein. So it will attach, it will transport the dopamine cells, dopamine hormone cells uh, from presynaptic to the postsynaptic cell. Okay, uh, so this is uh, one of the functions of protein, which is they can be the receptor protein. Uh, so this is another um, another examples of uh, the protein being the receptor between the membrane. Okay, uh, to the membrane. Okay, so the other important uh, of the protein is for motion, which is for muscle contractions. So we have actin and myosin. Okay, you also will learn about this in second year if you take the uh, the structure functions uh, subject. Okay, which is uh, this actin and myosin. It make made up of muscle fibers. Okay, and also the protein are act as the motor protein within the cells, which is they are allow the cells component to move from one place to another place. Uh, for example, flagella. Okay, flagella. Uh, they move the cells. So uh, the movement of flagellum actually they need the protein, right? And cilia the move uh, to contain around the cells. All of these movement they are need of protein. Okay, uh, so this is the actin and myosin. Okay. So um, the last uh, functions of properties actually for catalysis. Uh, which is almost all chemical reactions in the living cells are catalyzed by protein enzyme, right? And uh, also for information transfer, for example, the hormones, okay? And the last but not least important of uh, protein is actually they can provide the energy, okay? Same like carbohydrates, okay? Which is uh, they can provide the cells with the energy they need to exist. If the carbohydrates and also the lipids are lacking, okay, so the body will use the protein as an energy source. Uh, so, the, so this is the uh, also the importance of protein. Okay, so the we move to the properties of protein. So, protein are very large molecule. Okay, protein have characteristic amino acid compositions, which is uh, we're talking about. We have twenty uh, amino acid needed in our body. So some protein contain chemical groups other than amino acids, okay? So we have the R group or we call as the functional groups. So protein can be separated and purified. Uh, so this um, we call it as the denaturations, okay? It can affect by, just now I'm talking about, by the heat, by the acid, uh, by the alcohol, okay, and so on. And the other properties of property uh, of proteins, the individual proteins can be quantified. The function of a protein depends on its amino acid sequence. Okay, uh, and um, mm, the, the the amino acid sequence of polypeptide change can be determined. All right, and uh, the homologous protein from different species have homologous sequence. Okay, so um, for the protein quantifications, okay. It is necessary to understand the total protein contents, <clears throat> okay, uh, in the samples or in the formulated products, okay, because we can <clears throat> we can determine the uh, amino acid sequence in the protein, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> just now we already learned about the properties of protein, the functions of protein of proteins what is actually the proteins so now we are going we are moving to the protein structure okay so they have four structure of protein which is the primary secondary tertiary and also quaternary so this is the process that that uh, involve in each of the structure so in the primary structure okay i'm talking about the amino acid one single amino acid one single monomer of amino acid they are joining together so they will become the primary structure so this is actually the assembly of the amino acid okay the process is assembly of amino acid so we, they will become the one polypeptide okay so this is the first prim primary structure of protein so the for the secondary structure of protein is actually they are folding this amino acid they, they will fold they are folding so they, they they will become the pleated the alpha pleated sheet or the sorry the beta pleated sheet or the alpha helix okay shape so the the amino acid chain will 
folding become the alpha or beta. Then the tertiary structure of protein is actually they are picking up the folding chain. Okay, so they are picking up with the folding chain. Okay, this is the pleated sheet. So this is the alpha helix. They are picking up uh, the chain. So they be become the tertiary protein structure. And the last one is the quaternary uh, protein structure. Is actually the interaction between one tertiary with another one tertiary structured protein. Okay, so this is the example of one, this is the example of one. So the, the interaction between these two or more of tertiary structured protein, they, be, they will become the quaternary uh, structure protein. Okay, so we call the process of interaction between one tertiary to another one tertiary uh, protein structure. Okay, so we move to the first one. Okay, which is we call it as the primary structure. So the process involved is the protein assembly. Okay, so the amino acid sequence, uh, the amino acid sequence of polypeptide change. Okay, so the amino acid sequence of the polypeptide change. All right, and some consider that primary structure also includes number and location of any disulfate bonds. Okay, and it occurs at the ribosomes. And also it involves of polymerizations of amino acids that attach to the tRNA. Okay, then it will yield the, amine, uh, the primary structure. Okay, so as you can see from here, so this is what we call this, uh, the, the releasing of the water process. Okay, the, the dehydration synthesis, right? So they will, be, they, they, they will make the peptide bond. Okay, so this is what we call the, the, the protein assembly of amino acid. Uh, all right. So uh, the we're also talking about okay the sulfate bonds. The sulfate bond is actually uh, the chemical that cross link between or within the um, polypeptide. Okay, which is they can add the stability to the overall structure of the polypeptide. Okay, uh, so this is actually the first structure, the the assembly of the protein. Okay, so. Um, Okay, sorry. So um, the order of amino acid in change, uh, so this is one polypeptide, okay. So the order of each amino acid in a change, okay, determined by the gene, by the DNA, right. And slight changes in amino acid sequence, okay, any slight changes of amino acid sequence can affect the protein structure and also its function. Okay, even just one amino acid, even one amino acid change, they will, they will can make all the difference. Okay. For example, in here we have uh, sickle cell anemia. Uh, so as you can see from here, so this is the sequence of amino acid. Okay, so they have a valine. Okay, the, the last one, they have the glucine to the glucine. However, if the valine are add into the sequence of uh, this amino acid, okay, so this is the normal red blood cells and also the primary structure of a normal hemoglobin, okay, the primary structure. And this is the sickle red blood cells and the primary uh, structure of sickle cells hem hemoglobin, which is they, they, they already altered, they already add on one valine, one amino acid to the normal structure of uh, primary amino acid. All right. So, uh, if one DNA later of amino acid will change, okay, so it will affect, it will give the serious disease, okay. Um, for example, in here, uh, if the glutamic acid, okay, if the glutamic acid is actually, um, we call it as a negative charge, okay, because glutamic acid is actually, uh, glutamic acid is acidic uh, just now, glutamic acid is acid. Uh, amino acid, right? So they are they they are have negative charge and polar. So when when the valine okay is non-polar, uh, enter within uh, change the, the 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 normal primary structure, okay. So it will try to hide from the water, okay, because the valine is the non-polar, okay. So uh, it will hide from water of the cell by sticking to another hemoglobin molecules so it will change in amino acid sequence and it will affect the protein structure 
and it functions of hemoglobin. Okay, even the one difference of uh, amino acid, it will change the structure and it will change the, it will affect the functions of that protein. Okay, so that is the important of the assembly, the, 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 the correct assembly of amino acid protein. Okay, so that is the first structure. We go to the secondary structure of amino acid, which is the process involved either protein folding. Okay, it will, the, the, the linear of uh, polypeptide will fold together. Okay, so the secondary structure, it refers to uh, regular recurring arrangements in space of added adjacent amino acid. Okay, juran-juran sebelah dia. Okay, in a polypeptide change. Okay, so most common types of secondary structure, we have uh, alpha helix structure and also we have B-pleated sheet structure. Okay, so the local folding, okay, it will fold the, the, the change of amino acid. It will folding along a short sections of polypeptide. Okay, so the interaction between adjacent amino acid, it will um, attach with the H bond or hydrogen bond. Okay, so here... Here is the hydrogen bond. So from the linear uh, change, it will become the alpha helix because they have the hydrogen bond here. Okay, it folding up the linear amino acid. Okay, so uh, we have alpha helix, we have beta pleated sheets. Okay, so the examples of uh, protein that only have secondary structure is fibrous protein. For example, keratin and silk. Okay, uh, so this is the structure of keratin and silk. Okay, uh, so uh, this protein folding uh, occurs in the cytosol. Okay, it different with the primary uh, structure protein. It involves the localized special uh, special interactions among the primary structure elements. Okay, so the primary structure elements is the amino acids, and then it will yield a secondary structure. And here, so this is the um, primary structure of elements, the amino acid. So it will um, have the hydrogen bomb, it will fold in together, so it will become the folded protein. Uh, so this is the binding site. Okay. So the secondary structure is actually the non-linear. Just now we are talking about the primary structure is the linear. So the, the second structure is non-linear because they are folding together. Okay. And also three-dimensional and localized uh, to region of an amino acid change, okay? And the uh, secondary uh, structure protein is formed and stabilized by hydrogen bond, okay? Or allostrostatic and van der Waal interactions, okay? Uh, so this one um, um, uh, are effect uh, caused by the, uh, caused by, for the linear uh, amino acid to be folded together. Okay, so uh, the most common types of secondary structure, we have alpha helix and also we have the beta sheet. Okay, so alpha helix and beta sheet, they have the regular hydrogen bonding pattern. So this is the hydrogen bonding pattern. Uh, when we're talking about the beta sheet, they are sebelah-sebelah. The, the hydrogen bonded are in the, in the nearest uh, adjacent amino acid. Okay. So uh, we go to one by one of the structure of secondary uh, structure of protein, which is the first one is the alpha helix. So in some protein, the regions of peptide chains are called into spiral, okay, are called into spiral shapes. So this is what we call as the alpha helix secondary structure. So the alpha helix is a right-handed helix, all right, and the helix are joined together by the intra-interchange hydrogen bonds, okay, they are have the hydrogen bond in here between the carbonyl, uh, carbonyl oxygens of one amino acid residue and the amino acid hydrogens, okay, of the fourth residue down the change, okay, down the uh, linear change. So the R group will protrude, will protrude uh, outward from the helical uh, backbone and the core of the helix is tightly packed, okay. So this is the, 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 the figure, the structure of alpha helix where we can see that the regions of the peptide, okay, from, from, from linear, the region of the peptide, they are uh, changed are called into the spiral shapes, okay. And also, we, we, we just now we mentioned about the other group, are protrude uh, outward from the helical backbone. So this is actually the alpha, 
uh, the, 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 the R group, the functional group of the uh, amino acid. They are protrude outward from the helical bond. Okay. So this is the structure of um, the, the alpha helix. Okay. How about the beta pleated sheet? Okay. So the beta pleated sheet consists of peptide change that arrange side by side. Uh, kalau alpha helix, they become the spiral. But we are talking about the beta pleated sheet. The folding are uh, side by side. Okay. Which resembles a piece of paper folded into many pleats. So like a helix, the beta sheet uses full hyd uh, hydrogen bonding capacity of the polypeptide bone. Okay. So they, they will have uh, the hydrogen bond here from one amino acid to another um, uh, another side of amino acid. Okay. However, the hydrogen bonding occurs between neighboring peptide change rather than within one. Uh, kalau beta uh, alpha, the hydrogen bond are uh, between one of the polypeptide. Uh, kalau uh, if you're talking about the beta pleated, they are having the hydrogen bonding between neighboring peptide change. Okay. So the R group extends above and below the plane of the sheet. Okay, so this is the structure, this is the figure of the beta sheet. So the beta sheet also can be categorized into anti-parallel and also parallel uh, beta sheet. So what makes this difference between anti-parallel and parallel is because um, is, uh, the parallel, the parallel beta pleated sheets have two polypeptide change, okay, uh, that running, running in the same direction. Okay, they have, they are running in the same direction. So we call it as a parallel beta sheet. While the anti-parallel beta pleated sheets, they have the two or more polypeptide uh, strands that are running in the opposite directions. Okay. Uh, so um, so the, the anti-parallel uh, beta sheets uh, protein is actually more stronger and stable uh, hydrogen bond. They have a more stronger and stable of hydrogen bond. Okay, so and again the, the R group uh, are extend above and below the plane of the sheet. Uh, so this is the uh, R group. Okay, and above and the below of the plane of the sheet. Okay, so the, the secondary structure, the helices and sheet, the, the alpha and the beta sheet can be combined in various ways. So some protein have mainly have the alpha helis. For example, we have cryptochrome. We also have myoglobin, but some have mainly beta sheet, okay? But most of the uh, protein, they have both alpha and beta sheet, secondary structured protein, okay? For example, we have uh, chymotrypsin, uh, ribonucleus, okay? Cryboxypeptidase, uh, lysozyme, uh, right? So, um... Uh, the secondary structure, for example, is the fibrous protein. Uh, the primary structure, just now you're talking about the silk keratin, right? So the example of secondary structure is the fibrous uh, proteins. These fibrous proteins are water insoluble, usually physically tough, okay? And usually static, which is they can provide the mechanical support to individual cells and entire organism. Okay, for example, we have collagen and also keratin. keratin. Okay, uh, so this is the collagen uh, triple helix, okay, which is the left-handed polypeptide uh, helix are twist, okay, are twisted together to form a right-handed superhelical structure. Uh, so this is the secondary structure, for example, in the fibrous protein, all right. So we move to the uh, tertiary uh, structure of protein, okay, so the, the process involved in this uh, tertiary structure is the protein Pack, uh, packing. Okay. Uh, so the first one we have assembly of the amino acid, then we have the folding of amino acid, then the third one we have the packing of protein. Okay. In the tertiary structure. So the whole molecule folding. Okay. So it will create when the secondary structure, the secondary structure folded and form bonds to stabilize the structure into a unique shape. Okay, so this um, molecule folding is determined by the interactions between the R group. Okay, just now we are talking about the alpha, alpha helix and also beta helix. All the, 
all the R group are protrude outward of the structure, right? Uh, so these R group will interact each other, will folding each other to make it to 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 pack the protein. Okay, to pack the protein. Uh, like this one goes to this one, this one goes to this one. So it will pack together. Okay, so the high uh, it also determined by the hydrophobic introductions. Okay, and anchored by the disulfate bridge. Okay, and also um, the ionic bonds between the R group or the hydrogen bond between the backbones or the Wonderwall falls, Wonderwall falls. Okay, or Velcro. Okay, so this is where the whole uh, the whole thing are holding together. Okay, uh, so for example, in here we we have um we have here we have alpha. Okay, we have alpha helix here. Uh, so this this uh, R group will fold it into uh, with the the another R group of the alpha. So this will form the hydrogen bond. This will form the disulfide bridge. This, this will form the ionic bond. So it will pack together. Uh, so this is what we call as the tetrahedral structure. Okay. And it occurs in the cytosol, okay, for about 60% um, bulk of water, okay. And it involves the interaction between secondary structure, elements, and solvent, okay. And also then it will yield the tertiary structure, okay. So the tertiary structures is referred to the complete three-dimensional structure of entire polypeptide uh, from the linear to the uh, secondary structure. So for the uh, tertiary structure, it will form a complete uh, complete three-dimensional structure of the entire polypeptide. So usually involve the packing of structural elements, alpha, helix, and also B, beta pleated sheets. Okay. So for example, in here, uh, just now in the tertiary, we, we, uh, in, in the secondary structure, we have fibrous uh, protein. So the tertiary structure, we have the globular proteins. So this is actually the structurally complex. Uh, usually have the dynamics, usually complex, okay, because they are tightly folded, okay. They are roughly spherical and can be water soluble, okay, compared to the secondary structure. So if so, the, uh, the characteristically have hydrophobic interior, okay, in dalam there, have the hydrophobic interior, which is fill of the water and also they have the hydrophob uh, hydrophilic surface so it can be also water insoluble okay for example if the protein are bound to biological membrane all right so this is the the, the, the figure the structure of the tertiary uh structure protein okay for example we have uh, this is the sperm whale uh, myoglobin okay so this is the three-dimensional structure of entire Entire polypeptide, okay, which is uh, they have the interaction between the R group, okay, they have the, inter the interaction between the R group, right? Okay, then we move to the last one, which is quaternary structure. Okay, so the um, that's what I'm okay, there. So the, the process that involved in here is actually the protein interactions. So two or more tertiary folded peptin subunits will bond it together to make a functional protein lastly. So this is uh, our two or more tertiary folded peptide. Okay. So they will bond it together to make a functional protein. For example, in here, uh, the, the, the functional protein is the hemoglobin. Okay. So they are non-linear. Uh, they are three dimensional. Okay. Uh, the other example is collagen, which they have the three polypeptide. Uh, dalam dia ada alpha helix, alright. Uh, so this is the three polypeptide, okay, uh, that bond together uh, to become the collagen. Okay, uh, collagen is uh, important for skin and tendons. Okay, so this quaternary uh, uh, structure they are occurs in the cytosol in close proximity, uh, proximity to other folded and packed protein. Okay, so it involves the interaction among the tertiary structure elements of separate polymer change. Uh, so this is different uh, polypeptide. So this is different polypeptide. So they are interact each other to become a, to make a functional protein. Okay. So um, the spatial ar arrangement of subunit, 
okay, which is different polypeptide change we, within the poly, uh, protein, as you can see from here. So the subunit generally associate through the non-covalent introduction and in some cases they are disulfate bonds, okay, to, to, to add this more stability. For example, in here, uh, there are probably three, three polypeptide, they are interact each other. Uh, so they will become the nitritide reductase. How about the E. coli fumarase? Okay, so they have many uh, form of tertiary uh, structured protein. Okay, so they are interact each other. The color, eh? you, you see the color. So they 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 are forming the E. coli fumarase. Okay, the, this is the four. This is so this is the human hemoglobin. So this is the bacterial methane hydroxylase. Okay, so uh, again uh, from one, so this is the assembly of the amino acid from linear amino acid, from linear chain, they will folding together, they will become uh, the secondary, the secondary structure, okay, they have the alpha fili, they have the beta sheets and also beta, they have the beta sheets and also if the, 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 the secondary structure, they are packed together, they become the tertiary structure and if the tertiary structure, each tertiary structure are uh, interact each other, interact each other, they will become the uh, quaternary structure, okay? So this is the figure of 3D structure of protein, okay? So this is when the, uh, the tertiary structure, okay, they are, uh, they are compact each other, okay? But this is the quaternary structure where each of the tertiary structure they are interact with each other, so they become the functional group of protein. Okay. So we have uh, we have uh, finished the four structure levels of protein. So this is the protein structure of uh, review. Okay, the first one, the, the the first primary structure is when the AA is the amino acid sequence. Okay. They form the peptide bond each other between the amino acid to amino acid, right? So they will be, become the, they will yield the primary structure, okay? So the second one is the secondary structure. It, it can be uh, alpha helix and also it can be the beta pitted. So it will form the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen bonds here, okay? So this is the secondary structure. Then this is when the, the, the secondary structure are packing together, are packing up uh, the, the secondary structure uh, uh, from the R groups, okay? Uh, so they have the hydrophobic interaction, they have the deal sulfate bridge, they have the ionic bonds, okay, of the R groups. So they are packing up together, so they will become the tertiary structure. And the last one is when two or more tertiary folded peptide subunits or we call as the multiple polypeptides, okay, hydrophobic and, and also they form the hydrophobic introduction, interaction between uh, one, two or more tertiary structure, okay, they are bonded together to make a functional protein, okay, so this is what we call as the quaternary structure, okay. So this is the overview again, okay, you must remember this one, this is the, the, the primary structure, Okay, where the amino acid sequence are assembly here. So then they move to the secondary structure. They will form the uh, alpha helix or beta sheet. Okay, so this is the folding where, where the amino acid are folding together. Then they become the tertiary structure. When the, this is the three-dimensional structure formed by assembly of the uh, secondary structure. Okay, then the last one, it become the uh, quaternary structure of the protein. So the structure formed by more than one of polypeptide, okay, one or more polypeptide, okay. So they are interaction, interact each other to, to, to become the, to determine the functions, okay. So eight different uh, structure, they will give the different functions of protein, okay. And last one, we have the denaturations, which is the folding, unfolding and misfolding of protein. So in here, a protein, um, that is full into its normal uh, physiologically active change confirmation is in native states, okay, which is uh, they have their own functions, okay. And when the denaturations are occurs, okay, when a native protein unfold owning to 
uh, cleavage of the sulfate bridge or disruptions of the weak attractive forces. Okay, it can be reversible or irreversible. For example, it can be uh, it, it can be affected by the heat, okay, acid, alcohol, all right. So uh, the protein can be denaturated by heat, extreme of pH, certain organic solvents such as alcohol, acetone, and also certain solute like urea or by the exposure of the protein to detergents. Okay, so when the protein are denaturated, so it complicated uh folded structure okay it will become a it will denaturate and become a uh, long stranded of amino acid okay so the weak chemical forces the whole tertiary and secondary protein structure in here together to be broken down okay when the the protein are exposed to any of these uh, effects all right so because of the proteins okay they are the functions are depends on the structure so when the structures of um, protein are breaking breaking down, so uh, they will no longer have the they will no longer have the function. Okay, so this is what we call as the denaturations of protein. Okay, and last we go to the summary. Okay, so uh, this is what we call this. This is what we, we already learned about for today topic, which is the protein are the key player in our living systems. Okay, because they have a lot of functions. And the protein are polymer, uh, polymer, sorry, the protein are polymer, which is consisting of 20 kinds of amino acids, okay, uh, or we can, we also can call it as a polypeptide, okay. So each protein fold into a unique three-dimensional structure that defined by its amino acid sequence, okay. The first one must define by the, its amino acid sequence, okay. So the protein structure has a hierarchical nature, the protein structure is closely related to its functions, okay. The structure, the, the functions are depends on the structure okay so the protein structure prediction is a grand challenge of computational biology because we can predict uh, the, the the you know the, the the protein inside of the the amino acid inside of the protein okay because we can learn about the protein structure okay so that's all for today okay um i'm sorry for the extra time for about five minutes all right ah so, do you have any other questions? I switch on back my camera. Oh, lama I, I stand, about 10 minutes more. No, Dr. Akila Arif. So, uh, basically what you must know about protein is actually the functions, the structure. We have four levels of structure. Okay, how, what is the, what is the process involved in the, each levels of uh uh, uh, each level of structure of the protein, right? So you must you must also know about the amino acid structure, amino acid bond, all right? Uh, so that's all for today. Okay, we all learned about the protein. Okay, so our test for this coming Wednesday, uh, from our first topic to uh, to this protein topic, all right? So we'll have the MCQ questions, A, B, C, D questions. Uh, so please don't get confused. Because when it's wrong, so it goes wrong. There's no marks, okay? Tak ada markah kesian sebab A, B, C, D questions, okay? So please stick to the facts. Uh, please remember all the 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 lecture that I gave to you. I already up, upload, upload the lecture note and also the recording versions of the lecture. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Serap pula, sorry. Any questions? Because of this protein, protein banyak sangat facts that you need to know. So I I uh, I trying to compare it within this one hour lecture. Uh, so macam ni lah jadinya. Cakap pun macam bertih. So do you have any question? Okay, no question doctor. Okay, no, doctor. saya ada rest. Okay, kalau tak ada, thank you very much guys for your uh, cooperation and attendance for today's class. Please don't forget to click on, on your attendance in the spectrums and please don't forget next weekend and next weekend, next Wednesday we will have uh, tests. Uh, okay, so the test will be within 30 minutes. Okay, once you start with the test, so it will count start from 1 minute to 30 minutes. Okay, we will start from 9, 10 a.m. It will stop at 9.48 uh, a.m. It will automatically submit it, okay, within the 30 minutes, okay? And please uh, don't forget also to click on, on your attendance on that day, all right?
So I hope that I wish you all the best for next uh, test. Okay, I'll see you back in the next week on Monday. We will continue about the enzyme topic. Monday and Wednesday, same in the, the enzyme topic. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. See you guys. Good luck. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Doctor. 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 Thank you,